begin. Hi, my name is Rick Secord. I'm the pastor at the Memphis Free Methodist Church in Memphis, Michigan, and I'd like to say welcome to our video series today. Um, we uh, wish you a Merry Christmas to you and your family, and I pray that this uh, message here this morning would uh, impact you in a special way and that uh, you would enjoy all that's said and recall. Uh, I want to talk about the Christmas story. I'm sure we've all heard it over and over again, but I think uh, I want to just share a little bit differently uh, with you today. I want to talk some about the man, Luke, who wrote this uh, part of the gospel, and I think you'll find that uh, rather interesting and encouraging. I, I love this uh, opening that Luke brings into the account when he writes his introduction. The first four verses really touch me. He says, I have many have undertaken to draw up an account of these things that have been fulfilled among us. And so apparently there were a lot of different stories circulating around that have been that were written. And so he wanted to uh, clarify and make certain for himself and also a friend of his, Theophilus was his name, uh, about the accounts of Christ. So it says, many have undertaken to draw up an account of these things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those from the first eyewitnesses and servants of the word. Since therefore I myself, Luke says, have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, it seems good to me also to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you might know the certainty of the things you have been taught. That's Luke 1, verses 1 through 4. I cherish those four verses. This is a very personal thing. Luke explored, he investigated these accounts of Christ and came to a conclusion. And we'll share that as we go along today. Luke is an educated man. In fact, he was a doctor, a physician. And he tells the story from a doctor's perspective. He obviously had a curious mind, as most people in the medical field do, and as you would expect any doctor to have. Luke was a vigilant investigative reporter as well. He carefully probed every statement that he heard about Jesus. And I'm certain that as a physician, he asked many questions to get the detail of his account accurate. And beyond that, tales, beyond that, the tales and the fables that were probably circulating in the area at that time. Number three, Luke was a serious minded historian. He also wrote Acts and is commonly thought of in the church as the first church historian. And as you look at the way he writes, you can clearly see the marks of a tenacious historian who is determined to discover the truth about Christ. He's not a disciple, nor an apostle, nor even an eyewitness to any of the events that took place in Jesus' memory. Luke is truly a remarkable man. He never gave up on his quest for the truth about Christ. He was careful to learn all he could from eyewitnesses about the life and the times of Jesus. His interest, his genuine interest in discovering the truth is demonstrated by what he invested in getting to know Jesus. I think his friend Theophilus funded his travels all through Israel. And then I know that he spent time with the Apostle Paul all through Greece and Rome and uh, that part of the world as well. I don't think Luke would have joined Paul in the ministry had he not had a developing faith. Luke is truly a remarkable man. Because the truth was important to Luke, he relied heavily on actual eyewitness accounts. Because of Luke, Christianity doesn't say close your eyes and believe, but rather check it out for yourself. Luke says, read my report. 
Nevertheless, Luke was concerned that eyewitness accounts be preserved accurately so that the foundations of the Christian faith will be transmitted intact to the next generation. Do you think that Luke believed what he wrote? It's an interesting question, isn't it? I'm absolutely convinced that he believed everything he wrote. I'm convinced that he became a believer and that he continued to spread the gospel message. And here Luke is, 2,000 years later, continuing to spread the wonderful news of what he believed. And I thank the Lord for what Luke has written and for his tenacity. Now, from Luke, the first Christmas account. Luke writes, In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken in the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Verse 3, And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph and Mary went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. Now, this was no easy journey for Joseph and Mary. And I imagine Mary was far along in her pregnancy and making this journey was uncomfortable and also worrisome for Joseph. It wasn't safe in those days to travel. So I'm sure he had some concerns in this long journey they made from Galilee all the way south of Jerusalem. There were no reservations he made at the Comfort Inn along the way. And sometimes in our service to the Lord, we find ourselves in uncomfortable and unfamiliar surroundings. I can attest to that many times. As we serve the Lord, there are no guarantees of comfort and convenience. However, Christ does promise great rewards to those who are faithful to him. Christians through the centuries have traveled far and wide in much uncertainty and discomfort and hardship to take the gospel to the people of the known world. Let us endure hardship if we have to for the sake of sharing the gospel with others. And over the centuries, many have as they've gone into foreign lands to do things to help people and at the same time share the gospel message of the love of Christ. Continuing on with Luke's account, Joseph went there to register with Mary, who pledged, was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time for the baby to be born came. She gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. Ever get to a hotel and find that your room was not available? Not even one room left to spend the night? Yet God provided a place for them, Mary and Joseph, perhaps not to their liking, but certainly functional. Don't be overwhelmed when you find yourself in a place unsuitable to your liking. Frustrating, maybe, but you'll get through it. And how do I know this? The Lord is on your side and he will see you through. Even though there was no room in the inn that night, the Lord watched over this young family, and even in the days to come. And the Lord will watch over you because he loves you. He loves you and you are special to him as well. Continue on with Luke's story or account. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Christ. He is the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared 
with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to the highest, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Now you might look at this account of the shepherds as something that could have been made up, an old fable. But I don't think that was in Luke's interest. I think he wanted to know, and I think he actually asked. I think he visited with the shepherds who were there and got this account from them for exactly of exactly what they had seen and what they had done. I just don't trust that Luke would have fabricated this at all. I think it's absolutely the truth based on what I've read in the rest of Luke's gospel. <clears throat> when the sh angels had left them and gone into heaven, and oh, I wish that Luke would have given us a better picture of what the angels looked like. The shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. The shepherds heard the word and went to see what had happened in Bethlehem. Perhaps it is no different for many who seek him today. And Luke writes, And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And here Luke confirms it. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Verse 19, but Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which are just as they had been told, according to Luke. Now many have come to that time in their life when there is no room for them. Several years ago, a friend named Ken got to a place in his life where there was literally no room for him. He's about my age, and so I understand and had great compassion as he told the story. He lost his job, and his wife told him to get out. Not a very nice lady, I imagine. For the first time in Ken's life, he found himself with absolutely nothing. He had no place to work and no room to sleep except his car. And this is where he stayed for six months. He lost everything, yet his faith, it is his faith that sustained him during this time. He remained faithful in his church, but being a quiet and unassuming man, he chose not to ask for help from his church family. He would make do with what he had. And sadly, they did not know him well enough to ask how he was doing. He was lonely, even in his own church. Sadly, there was no room for him in anyone's life. And as he told me this story, I wondered how he was able to press on. It was his faith in the Lord. That in due time, God would provide, and the Lord did. At that time, I had, when I had met Ken, he was prosperous, married again, had a wonderful wife, and things were going very well. He was a humble man and thanked the Lord for what he had learned during this time in his life when there was no room for him in the life of other people. Keep in mind that life is a series of trials and tribulations. And as we emerge from these trials, we, trials, we will experience joy. Life brings, off, life brings often, what life brings often takes us into the valleys. But with God on our side, he always brings us up to the mountaintops. There will be weeping in the evening, but joy comes in the morning. Psalm 30, verse 5. The Lord has a purpose and a plan for your life. He uses the experiences you face in your life to develop your character. And as your character develops through these hardships, you become more and more like Christ. And you become a wonderful blessing to other people. But even in times of hardship, know that God is preparing you for something better. Father, we thank you for this word. And we ask, Lord, that you would just bless each one who has heard this. 
And Father, that you would help each one to remember that Christmas is the time when we celebrate the birth of Christ, the Savior of the world, the Savior of our life. Jesus is the one who gives us hope. Jesus is the one who gives us the hope and the love that we all need. And I thank God for Luke, who reported it accurately in his gospel. Now I encourage you, take some time over the next month to read the gospel of Luke and think about him as he recorded the, the life and times of Jesus. Amen.